Arrays Part 2. Here we're going to be covering two-dimensional arrays. Two-dimensional arrays. Two-dimensional arrays store grids of data, not just lines of it. Creating a 2D array. The format is type bracket 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 name equals new type so whatever type of array you want. Open bracket the number of rows close bracket. Open bracket the number of columns close bracket. An example if we had char bracket 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 tic-tac-toe board new char bracket three bracket bracket three bracket that would create a grid of three by three characters which could be used for a tic-tac-toe board. Creating a 2D array from values type bracket 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 name equals open curly brace Followed by another open curly brace, you'll list the first row of data, then close your curly brace, comma. In curly braces, list the second row of data, comma. You continue that procedure until you reach the final row, which will be open curly brace, row of data, close curly brace, and then close curly brace to close out the 2D array. <coughs> this will make more sense with the example below. Int bracket 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 num grid equals open curly brace opening the array and then you're going to list off all the rows of data a row of data in our number grid is going to be two columns two comma three is a row seven comma four is a row one comma three is a row four comma six is a row and then when we're done we have an extra curly brace at the end closing off the initial one that says here's my data accessing the number of rows from a 2d array we say name.length, that's how many rows there are. So int bracket 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 num grid equals curly brace. The same grid from earlier, two, three, seven, four, one, three, four, six. If you'll notice that has two columns, but it has four rows of information. So when we say num grid dot length, we would get four because that's the number of rows. Accessing the number of columns from a 2D array. Name bracket zero bracket dot length. An example would be int bracket 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 num grid. So the same num grid from before two three seven four one three four six. If we system dot out dot print grid bracket zero bracket dot length, that would print two, because if we access location two. Let me grab the pen real quick. Let's go back. There, it finally activated. So we want to pin. This is row zero. This is row one. This is row two. This is row three. So when we say numgrid0, we're accessing the row of information that is 2, comma, 3. So 2, 3 is the row we're grabbing. If we were to ask that row, once it's been pulled out, how long it is, that would give us 2. Accessing an element. So if you want to find out what a single value in a grid is, it is name, bracket, whatever row you want, bracket, bracket, column, bracket. An example, if we have the same num grid that we keep working with, if we wanted spot 3, 1, first we'd have to count which row it is. So normally in math, you go x, y. But since grids are accessed by row column, it's y, x. But we're not going to call it y, x because that would be confusing. We're going to call it row column. So you remember, you just need to remember rows come first, then columns. So count down to the correct row. 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you count over to the correct column. 0, 1. So 3, 1 would be 0, 1, 2, 3 down, and 1 over, 0, 1. This would give us the value 6. Alright, on this slide we're going to talk about changing a value. 
the format is name, bracket, row, bracket, bracket, column, bracket, equals value. So again here on the bottom we're going to print spot 3, 1, which on our last example we found out was 6. So this would print out 6. Then we're going to go to spot 3, 1 and change it to 7. So we go down 3, 1 over, and we replace that with a 7. The 7 goes right there. Then when we print spot 3, 1, it has changed, so the next time we print it, it would be 7. If you want to print all the values with a for loop, you write a for loop to go through all the rows, then you write a for loop to go through all the columns in that row. You would print names, the, sorry, you'd print the name of the array, bracket R, bracket, bracket C, bracket, system.out.print, new line after that row, that column finishes. This isn't going to make a lot of sense until we see an example, so I'm going to walk through the next example. But you do want to write this format down so you have it if you ever need to print a 2D array. Alright, let's go look at the example for it. Here we have numgrid. And this is a different number grid. 2, 3, 7, 5. It has four columns but two rows. So here we're going to write r equals 0. So I'm going to write up here r equal 0. Then we're going to write c equals 0. Let's just write this real quick. That is 2. And we're going to know that this right down here is the number of columns and there are four columns. So the first time we print, we print what's at spot 0, 0. So we print 2. And then it comes around, C goes to a 1. Then we print the 1 at 0, 1, which is a 3. Right. Then it comes around, C goes up to 2. Then we print 0, 2, which is a 7. C changes to a 3. We come around, and 3 is less than 4, so we do it again. We print the one at spot 0, 3, which is 5. C goes to a 4. Is 4 less than 4? No, the loop stops. Then we get to print line. So now our cursor is going to be sitting below the 2. After all that inner part's finished, we come back around and we change R to 1. 1 is less than 2. So we do the loop. C will get reset to 0 because we're hitting the loop again. So C is back to being 0. We print 1, 0, which would be 7. It's going to go through the rest of the columns just like last time. So C goes to a 1. We print 1, 1, which is 4. C goes to a 2. We print 1, 2, which is 3. C goes to a 3, we print 1, 3, which is 1. The loop ends after C goes to 4, because 4 is not less than or equal to 4. So after the loop stops, we move to the next line, putting the cursor on the, putting the, cursor on the next line below the 7. So this is how an example of actually running through printing a 2D array works. Now we're going to go over how to print all the items in a 2D array with a for each loop. The first thing we're going to do is for whatever type of list you have, bracket bracket row equals name. What this does, it actually pulls an entire row of data. So you're doing a for each loop to go through every row. Once you have a row, we can do a for each loop because the row is a 1D array. So we do a for each loop to go through the 1D array. And we've already talked about how a for each loop works with a 1D array. So it prints every item separated by space, separated by spaces. Then after that loop finishes, we print to the next line. Then when we come around, we grab the next row and then print everything in that row, move to the next line. We keep doing this until we run out of rows. Let's look at an example. So here when we say int bracket bracket row equals, sorry, colon numgrid, what we're saying is we're going to go through every row in numgrid. The, and each time we'll call that row, row. So the first time this loop executes, we grab 2, 3, 7, 5. Int item, 
colon row. We go through every item in the row, calling it item, and by the way, it's of type int because we have an int array. So when this goes through, it prints two, space, three, space, seven, space, five. Then it runs out of data, so it stops, moves, next line. Now the cursor's sitting here. Then we grab the next row of data and call it row. Then we can do a for loop to go through it, and that's going to be seven, four, three, one. Then we go to the next line, so somewhere down here, and there is no new row to grab, so we're done. All right, that's it.